Today in the news, we take a look at Ampere predictions, a kind of useless feature, and Intel's never ending nightmare. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. It's been a little over a year since they released their top end 20 series cards and about six months since the small refresh on them. So we're kind of approaching the time for a new release. So far, all we got were wild speculations and rumors. And well, that didn't really change, but a Taipei Times article is giving us a little more to gnaw on. An investment consulting firm with high exposure in the sector spoke to the Taipei Times and said that Ampere would provide 50% more power while halving its power consumption. They base this on the fact that Nvidia is dropping to a 7 nanometer process for their next gen architecture. Now that is a bold claim, and while they might have the exposure in the gaming sector, I think that the investment firm might be a little off. I do think though that Nvidia might be able to do one or the other, but not both at the same time. Let's look at the process nodes for a second. Nvidia uses 12 nanometer lithography for Turing. It's a customized version exclusive for Nvidia made by TSMC. According to what I've read, it could be based on either the 16 nanometer or 14 nanometer process with a tighter pitch. They basically just call it 12 nanometers. So if Nvidia was to move down to TSMC's standard 7 nanometer process called N7, they could gain 25 to 35% in speed or reduce the power consumption by around 50%. If Nvidia goes for the N7 plus process, which is the same process AMD should be using on Zen 3 and Navi with RDNA 2, then it would be 10% more speed or 15% better power savings compared to their regular N7. And that's if Nvidia was just to scale down Turing. Add to that the architectural changes made for Ampere and you got a GPU that could consume a ton less power or be about 30 to 40% faster or more, but not both at the same time. Now sure, Ampere will apparently be manufactured by Samsung, which has a track record of better silicon at equal size as compared to TSMC, but come on, there's a limit to how much they defer. Nvidia doesn't really pride themselves on being low power, they just happen to be the most efficient cards out there. So here's my prediction, and as usual, un grand salut recommandé. Nvidia will likely take a power focused approach. With AMD at their tail and the next gen Navi cards in the works, Nvidia will want to just go all out and keep the top spot they've had for years while keeping their cards relatively power efficient when compared to the competition. What do you guys think of that? Let me know down below. Moving on, we got OnePlus in the news. The company will be at CES 2020 to unveil the Concept One, a prototype smartphone that, well, looks like any smartphone really from what I can tell. And its main feature, a disappearing camera. No, seriously, the OnePlus Twitter account just posted a small teaser video and called it an invisible camera with color shifting glass. Now, I'm not sure if the fact that they called it that means it's only meant to hide the camera, but if it acts like an electrochromic ND filter, this could be pretty useful. Smartphone cameras are getting better and better, but the way they adjust lighting condition is usually via either sensor sensitivity or ISO and shutter speed. Some exceptions apply like the Galaxy S9 and S10, which have two apertures, f1.5 and f2.4, but the addition of an ND filter like that would allow an extra angle of adjustment for video where shutter speed might make things a little too sharp in daylight. If that's not it, then it's just a disappearing camera, which is kind of boring and a waste of electrochromic glass. Then we have Intel. Oh, Intel, how set are you in your ways? So their CPU line has been stagnant for a very long time. Everybody knows that. And despite that, as we've seen time and time again, the compatibility of CPUs to motherboards has been a continuous cycle of trash. A new chipset every two years while limiting compatibility for newer and older CPUs, even though they are technically compatible. Now for the next gen motherboards on the socket 1200, you would think that Intel would take a page out of AMD's book and make it compatible for longer. 
Well, it seems not. The next gen CPUs are Comet Lake S on the Socket 1200, and after that is believed to be Rocket Lake S on the same socket. And now we got leaks that Adler Lake S, which should follow Rocket Lake, will have a new socket, again called LGA1700. The information comes from Momomo US and Komachi and Saka on Twitter, which have an excellent track record for leaking these kinds of things. Apparently, the socket will also be more rectangular, which might be a hint at a multi-chip design for that specific generation. Anyways, I'm kind of disappointed and I wished Intel would have learned from AMD a little bit. I mean, even their cheapest A320 boards from three years ago still has compatibility with new CPUs to some degree. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Yes, I cut my beard. It was getting way too annoying. Take care.